everyone and welcome back to Keeping Up With The NWSL. This is episode 3 um, and we've got 4 games to talk you through from the 3rd round of fixtures in the Challenge Cup tournament. Um, let's just go straight into it. So the first game came between North Carolina Courage and Chicago Red Stars. Um, the Courage walked away with a 3 points on this one, um, winning 1-0. Um, these two teams were sort of going into this game very different ends of the table. Um, North Carolina were flying high at the top, whereas Chicago have, have been in and around the bottom since the very beginning. So um, yeah, it was a real chance for um, for Chicago to you know get get some points on on the board and and um, shock North Carolina courage. But um, from the scoreline, you can see that that um, that didn't happen. Um, the first real chance of the match didn't come until the the fifteenth minute of the game, um, with Dabina having a free kick on the left side and um, swinging it in. She's I don't think she's going for goal. She's just trying to um, whip a ball into the box for someone to try and get the head on to. But she puts a bit too much power on it, and it look it looks like it's gonna go in at the far far corner. But um, Alyssa Nair was was able to um, save that one. Um, Sam Mewis then went close a few moments later with a nice run. Um, she weaved in and out of, of a few players. Nice run and a low shot on the edge there that looked like it was just going to sneak in um, at the bottom corner. But Nair managed to get a hand to it and, and knock it around the post for a corner. Um, it was then Chicago's turn to have a go and they should have took the lead on the 20th minute. Um, North Carolina have possession of the ball, they're just passing it um, between themselves on the back line and it's actually um, the very experienced Abby Dahlkemper who's, who gets the ball on the centre circle basically and sort of can't get it out of her feet and um, Watt just manages to pinch it off her. She's through on goal and you're thinking, yeah, it is, it is a goal here for Chicago, like that would have, that would have changed the game. But um, both Dahl Kemper and Erseg make a make a brilliant recovery and manage to to knock Watt off balance, and she sort of just then toe pokes it at the goalkeeper. Um, not much power on it at all, and the keeper it, it just sort of hits the keeper. She doesn't really pull off a save, just hits it. And um, yeah, the Chicago denied the first real their first real opportunity of the game. Um, watching the replay, like what probably could have gone down. Um, Dark Imp was sort of like nudging it a little bit. Um, so if, you know, if, if what was that type of player, she could have gone down. That would have been a, a free kick or even a penalty. Um, so Chicago and Dark Imp probably would have seen red for for being the um, last player. But no, obviously what stays on her feet. So so credit to her for that. Um, on the fortieth minute, Lynn Williams intercepts a, a Juliet pass. Um, it looks to you know do a cross ball. Um, up into North Carolina College's final third and um Lynn Williams is just is like you know, obviously close enough to block the um pass and she's through on goal then and, and Lil Lynn Williams is so quick you think oh she's not gonna catch up to her catch up to her um and she does uh, and fair play to it it's a great recovery and a great challenge in, in the box because it could have gone so much wrong you know she could have missed misjudged the tackle mistimed it and given away given away a penalty but she doesn't and um yeah, it's a great recovery from from Juliet. If if some of you follow us on Twitter, you'll see um that we reposted the the video, the challenge. It's it's done the rounds on Twitter, so you can go and go and watch it over there. But it's a great recovery from from it. Um, yeah. So like I say, there's plenty of chances for both teams in in the first half, more so for for North Carolina. But no one's able to um put the ball in the net, and it's nil nil at half time. Um, and then the first and only goal of the game didn't actually come until the 80th minute. Um, there was no real chances for, for either half, really, within within the second half. But um, on the 80th minute, North Carolina Courage do a, a well-worked short corner. It's definitely, definitely one off the training ground, the one they've been working on. Um, and a lovely ball that's floated into the box and is met by, by Captain Erseg in North Carolina. Take all three points from that and extend their lead at the top of the table. So... Um, they've won all three of their matches now. Um, one more to go before the semi-finals, so I'm expecting them them to be in the semi-finals. Um, and um, yeah, I'm expecting them to go all the way. To be honest, they're, they're a great team. Um, the second game of that evening came between Portland and Washington. 
Um, going into this game, Washington had won, had won one, lost one, and Portland had drawn one and lost one. So, um, it was. I think it was more important for Portland to to take three points from this. And um, they like, they've been in and around the bottom scene with Chicago the whole time. So. They really needed to um, to up the game in this match, but it ended up finishing one one. Um, I had to watch the highlights of this one because I couldn't. It was at three o'clock in the morning, and there was there was no way I could stay up and watch that as much as I wanted to. I, I just couldn't. Um, so I watched the highlights the next day, and within you know the first ten minutes, Washington were on top. Um, Bella Bixby was tested twice in the space of a couple of minutes in goal, and. Um, one shot by Ashley Sanchez was absolutely rocket to that um with some pace, um, which fair play to the keeper she managed to hold on to it. But yeah, Washington were definitely on top within the first ten minutes. Um, Lindsay Lindsay Horan had a good opportunity for Portland on the twenty sixth minute with um a cross went into the box from the right back. Christine Sinclair sort of heads it on, um and the angle and. Um, I think her hand's positioning, she sort of loses her foot in a little bit. Um, she doesn't really quite get like the best connection on the ball, but it does it does go across the face of the goal. But again, it's down to her teammates to to run into the box and um, you know be positioned in in that area, and just there's no one there. Um, so uh, you know it was to be fair, it was actually a good ball going in. Um, the keeper's following the the cross in, so she's at the front post. So. If if a Portland player was was following that ball in and and was in that position, then it probably would have been one 0 to Portland. But like I said, no one was there, and the the opportunities missed. Um, I think Washington were the best best team of the first half though. Um, but no goals are scored, and it's nil nil at half time. Um, Washington then continue their good form in this match straight from the straight in the second half, and Hatch is is through on goal. Within the first couple of opening minutes, but again Bixby pulls off a great save to to deny it. Um, not much happens between then and then on the 16th minute, it's actually Portland who who break the deadlock with a great Lindsay Haran goal, um, a signature header. Um, she's lethal from those positions and she's proved it once again with this header, um, from a Megan Klingenberg free kick. Um, I think it's I think it's safe to say that. Lindsay Haran has been the main player for Portland. Obviously, Tobin Heat's not in this tournament. She opted out, so there's one key player, skillful player out. Christine Sinclair is a really good player as well, so she's definitely um, one to always keep an eye on in these games. But it's it's, it's Lindsay Haran who sort of who takes number one spot, I think, in um, ones to watch for Portland. Um, and she finally gets a reward with a with a great dive and header that that loops over the keeper and. Um, off the keeper gets a touch to it off the bar into the net and you can see like how much it, it meant to it in the celebrations and, and Portland then took the lead. Um it was a short lead though, it was only eight minutes long. Um Washington then levelled the game with a with a great goal themselves and a, a great loop and header themselves to be honest. Um corners flung in. It's quite a low corner. I think Ashley Hatch is perfectly Ashley Hatch Ashley Sanchez is perfectly positioned on the front post, um, and she manages to keep it alive with a lovely back heel. Like she's not even looking. I think she's just sort of hits it just to sort of try and keep it in. Um, a lovely back heel that goes to the back post, and I think it's Stab who scores. Um, for Washington, she's at the back post, a looping header that goes over everyone, including the keeper. Um, Megan Klingenberg's actually on the on the far post position on the line, but she can't quite. She she does get a touch on the ball, but she sort of heads it into the roof of the net rather than um than out. But I think it was already crossed the line anyway, so I don't think it it go down as a, as an own goal. But yeah, to be fair, Washington probably deserved to to um have a goal in that game. They were definitely on top throughout most of it um, and had the most chances. Um, from that point on. There's not really much to shout about, but Lindsay Horan does have an opportunity to get a second of the game and, and the winner more than likely for Portland because it, it's in the 87th minute that the chance comes. Um, a, a lovely ball over the top of the defenders, a great first touch from Horan and all she has to do is strike it. She does get a good connection on the ball and it looks like it's going to sneak into the corner from, from where the 
camera's positioned it was right right behind the shot and um, it looks like it's going to sneak into the bottom corner but um, Bledsoe and Goal gets enough of a, of a touch on it and sends it out for a corner and that was pretty much the last chance of the game um, the, the camera pans her on and she's got a, a head in her hands like that so she, she I think she knew herself that that was probably the last real opportunity of the match for Portland but yeah it finishes 1-1 between Portland and Washington Um. I think it's safe to say that Bixby has definitely been a standout performer for Portland so far this tournament. She's been amazing and um, she pulled off some incredible saves um, in all three of their matches. To be honest, if you go back and watch the highlights of all three of them, she's saved them. She's saved quite a few. Um, and she had, you know, she obviously had some big shoes to fill in in France, who, who's out of this tournament with a knee injury. So she's definitely stepped up and um, credit to her for that. Um, like I said, same can be said for her and she's been really dominant for Portland this tournament. Um, some stats were posted after the game of the day and um, in that game against Washington, she had for the Thorns, she led for the Thorns in goals, shots, shots on goal, chances created, passes, completed passes, duels, duels won, aerial duels, aerial duels won and fouls in. So, that's like I think that was like ten things that she was top of the pile for out of all the Portland players. So that speaks speaks volumes of how important she is and and how well she's been doing. Um, the next set of fixtures wasn't played until yesterday. So today's Thursday. You'd watch this on a Thursday. Um, the next two games weren't played until yesterday, which is Wednesday evening. Um, I managed to watch most of the Utah vs Rain game. Um, it was half five yesterday, so that's a decent time to watch a footy match. At. Um, Rain actually claimed their first victory of the tournament with a Bethany Balsa scoring right at the end to to get the points for them. Um, Utah obviously came back in their first match against Houston to go three three. They then won their last match again thanks to it, um, Amy Rodriguez goal. So they've got a little bit more confidence than Rain in this tournament who haven't really been doing that well. Um, and it started off with Utah having the first chance of the game within the sixth minute and it was Amy Rodriguez again driving into the penalty area. Um, but Alana Cook, who's on, who's on loan from PSG, um, manages to make a great recovery and um, nothing comes to the chance. You know, it's it just the, a great tackle from Cook and the keepers manages to, um, to pick it up. Um, it was pretty much Utah for the entire 40, first 45 minutes, to be honest. They had loads of good chances um, in and around the pe the rain penalty area, but not much to really test the goalkeeper. They, they found themselves on the edge of the area quite a bit, but either the, the rain defence just swarms whoever had the ball and manages to pull off a block or like a shot goes wide or a misplaced pass just yeah just doesn't really quite happen for Utah. Um, Nil nil at half time. Utah then come straight back out, the start as they meet, um, same start as they did in the first half, and um, have their first opportunity with Vero picking out Weber, who was free in the penalty area. Um, she she probably picks the wrong option for me. She probably she probably should have let the ball go across her and try and shoot with her left foot and go across goal, but she sort of turns inside and goes with her right foot and tries to curl it. But she doesn't get enough kale on the ball and it's um and it's straight at the goalkeeper. So it was an easy save in the end, to be honest. Um Utah were on, on top for the whole match. Um until the seventieth minute when Rain sort of come alive a little bit and it's Bolstead again who has a shot on, on goal that tests spawn hard, but she makes a save. Um she Bolsa connects with the ball really well. Um, it's it's certainly going right in the bottom corner if um, Barnhart doesn't position herself well and get down and makes the save. Um, but then Mimiki comes on for Rain, and she was the difference maker for them a hundred percent. Um, she just she just controlled everything. A cross and a passing is so good. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure why she wasn't starting. Maybe the maybe the manager wanted to go for something a little bit different in this match. But she comes on and in the 80, 89th minute she supplies Balsa with a lovely cross. And then credit to Balsa as well. She does the perfect header of um, across the face of goal into the floor right in the bottom corner. And, and Barnhart doesn't even dive to try and get it. And 
she's just she's still she's still on her feet when she, when she's um when the the ball hits the back of the net. So yeah, fair play to to Rain. Yeah, and they definitely came alive in the in the last twenty minutes of the match. And um, Utah probably should have just took their chances um when they had them really. So yeah, Rain get their first win of the tournament. Um, and then this fourth and final game of this round came between Sky Blue and Houston Dash. Again, that game was at three o'clock in the morning, so um, there was no way I could stay up and watch that. So I've, I've caught up on the highlights, and um, I was almost certain that Houston would, would take the win. They've been on great form in this tournament, um, so I was very surprised to see the score line this morning when I woke up and see that Sky Blue actually won two nil. Um, Sky Blue literally score for them from the first real attack of the game on the sixteenth minute, and it's Paige um, Monahan who gets the goal with the great goal in balls fed in between the Houston defenders um, and Monaghan times are run perfectly and not offside. Campbell comes out to put under pressure trying to scoop the ball up but Monaghan goes round here, knocks it out of her feet, it, it's great and she just taps it into the back of the net, it's, it's a lovely goal. Um, and then from that moment on it's pretty much all sky blue. They have a few more chances before their second goal comes, and it was it was a it was a it was a good second goal to be honest. It was a long range effort from Kawasumi and um, that finds the net. Um, Jane Campbell comes out of a goal to try and clear a pass, um, and it's a, it's a bad it's a bad pass, and um, it ends up at the feet of Kawasumi, who then obviously Campbell's off a line, so she spots that she just goes for goal and. Yeah, it's an, just an open goal for it to aim for. So Sky Blue actually found themselves 2 0 up at half time. Um, I think they were more surprised than anyone. Obviously, they haven't had um, the best tournament in the best couple of seasons, but yeah, 2 0 up at half time. Um, the Dash try and pull one back within the first few minutes of the second half. Um, Christy Mewis picks out Prince in the area, but she can't get the ball off from under her feet, and then a heavy touch just. It just it's an easy pick up for um for the goalkeeper um so yeah that was the really only real chance for Houston in that game which is surprising um and an even more surprising stat that I saw on Twitter after the match was that Sky Blue had not won a game by multiple goals since June two thousand and seventeen so you know this was a really big win for Sky Blue and they'll definitely um they'll definitely be be a uh, flying high and full with confidence for the next match um so let's take a look at the at the current table then it looks like this put a little picture here of it for you um sky blue actually find themselves second in the table after that win last night which is just proves just how up and down this whole tournament's been obviously North Carolina are the only ones who have stayed in the same position the whole time they've been top right from the very start obviously winning all three matches um on nine points but yeah, Sky Blue found themselves second. Houston, Utah, Rain, Washington, they're all within the same um, n number of points. And then obviously Portland and Chicago are, are battling, having their own little battle at the bottom, basically. So yeah, the next round of fixtures are, are going to be interesting. Um, some of them aren't being played until over the weekend. So um you'll probably have another end of sl video um over the weekend but thank you very much for watching remember to like the video comment subscribe to the channel we had two new videos that went out yesterday um so please go and check them out and i will see you all very soon with a new video bye